Hi everyone, Rendon here with TJ Free. In this video, I want to show you the Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte version, and I want to play with it and see if it's a good replacement for a desktop computer. So I'm going to hook it up to one, maybe even two monitors and see the performance and if it's a viable option to maybe replacing your laptop or even your desktop computer with one of these tiny little computer boards. If you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi, I'll, I'll have another video in the link in the description where I go over some projects that I've built with this in the past. And for the actual kit I'm using is this kit by Labists. And so I'll include a link for this. It's for sale on Amazon. You can also check out their website. But this is a starter kit. It's the way I recommend going because it comes with everything you need. If you were to buy the actual Raspberry Pi, which the 8 gigabyte is very hard to find in stock right now, but if you were to find that and then buy a case and buy a, a USB cable and buy the SD card and everything you need to be up and running, uh, it's much more expensive than if you were to just buy the entire kit up front. So I recommend buying the kit and we're going to unbox this and take a look real quick and see what there is. But I do have to give a shout out to Labis. They're not sponsoring this video, but they did send me this kit for free uh, to keep and to use and to show you guys. So I really appreciate them. And if you appreciate my content and my videos, I hope that you'll support them and at least consider buying their kit if you want to get into the latest model of Raspberry Pi. Let's take a look at the starter kit. So this is the box the starter kit comes in. It's really nice packaging. It has some different uh, things on the side that says you can do it for Python encoding, home PC, uh, robot control. And then right here on top, we see we have the Raspberry Pi. At this point in time, it's the Pi 4 8 gigabyte. These guys have been making these starter kits for a while now. And so if you're watching this video in the future, they may have an even um, later version out. We can open this up and see. And uh, we have just the brand new board here. And this is just the board the actual computer board. So we have our processor here, we have USB ports, network, we have two video ports, and then the USB type C for power, and then also headphone or 3.5 millimeter jack for audio out. In here we have the start guide. Now this is what's from Labis, but just a great quick start guide with color, kind of put it on a higher quality paper. We'll set that aside. Um, this is a very decent case, so it's very lightweight. It has a thing here you can hook it up to a, uh, for like a camera. So if you want, you could use this as a camera. Um, we've got the sides on here so that the ports will come through. So that would fit like there. This is the side here. And we've got the back and this side here. And then the bottom, we have some cooling, some perforations for cooling there. And then the top looks like this. So it comes with... Uh, an adapter cable, which is HDMI to micro HDMI. We can open this up and see what it looks like. This is just your full size HDMI, like what would plug into the back of your monitor. And then this is the micro HDMI, which is less common. And the micro HDMI is the one that plugs into the actual Raspberry Pi board. So this plugs in right here, and then you can connect this to your computer. These, I believe on Amazon, you pay about $10 just for this cable alone if you buy it separately. So that's nice to have included in the kit. We have heat sinks that we can put right on here. So we've got a large heat sink for the processor and some of these different chips that can that can uh, heat up. And these are nice, uh, these are quite heavy. These are probably some of the heaviest heat sinks I've felt. They're not aluminum. Uh, I believe they're copper or some kind of alloy. So that is really, really cool. I like these. And then they have just an adhesive on the back, a sticker you just peel off and it sticks to it. So you don't need any thermal paste or anything. They just stick right onto those chips. It also has a fan. So this fan, I didn't look closely at the case, but this fan, I'm guessing when we open this up, uh, we can just open this up right here. So yeah, it looks like the fan will fit right here. So there's a fan that'll go right there and then we can have cooling and we have some different screws here for installing the fan. And then this is 128 gig. Wow, this is an awesome kit. These guys are amazing for sending this. This is 128 gig micro SD card. And so that's going to go into uh, the Raspberry Pi right here. And it says this is already pre-flashed with Raspbian. So I don't even need to download any software. I can just plug this right in to the Raspberry Pi, hook up the cables, and start using it. Uh, that's great. And then this is the power cable. A lot of people already have USB cables, but something to remember, especially about these more powerful Raspberry Pis, they need a lot of power and they need a high amperage uh, power supply. And so this is a nice clean power supply. It'll input either anywhere from 100 to 240 volts AC, and it outputs five volts, 3000 milliamps, or three amps. That's pretty big, considering a lot of these chargers for cell phones are gonna be maybe half an amp or one amp. 
So that's really cool. This is a three amp and it's got a switch here so you can switch it on and off. A switch right on the side and then this is the USB type C which is what the Raspberry Pi 4 uses for power. So that just plugs in right there. And here's another HDMI cable so it does have the two so I think I will try out to do a dual monitor. Um, let's just make sure. Yeah, this is HDMI to micro HDMI. Um, you can also do, uh, they have a DisplayPort adapter that's DisplayPort on this side and then micro HDMI on this side. So you can get a different adapter depending on what your monitor needs. Uh, and that's just about everything. We've got in here a Phillips screwdriver that we can use for putting in the fan in the case. And we also have a Type-C card reader. So this will just be, it's a card reader, but it uses the Type-C USB port, which is the smaller, more modern type. And that is everything that's in there. And so let's get everything all put together, and then we'll go from there. So there's really not a lot of assembly required. This top part of the case just snaps into the bottom part, and then these just screw right in. They're already pre-threaded, and it has these screws, so we'll just have to screw these in. And I like that they sent five screws. There's actually five of these screws here. So they've got five, and that's good, you know, it's four plus an extra, just in case you forget one, or in case one, you know, you lose one, they sent extras. I really, I really enjoy it when, uh, when there's some thought put into that. Excellent. We'll turn this around here, and then we will put on the heat sinks. And the heat sinks are kind of shaped to according to where they need to go. So this is going to be the one for the main processor. This one's shaped more like a rectangle. It's not completely square. We're going to put it on that chip right there. And then this is on the next largest chip, this chip right here. And to do that, I'm just going to peel off this adhesive. And then I'll just set that right in on there, set it on top. And I'll make sure that's out of the way. Try to get it centered as I can before pressing down. About like that. And I'll just apply some gentle pressure for a little maybe five seconds or so make sure I get that pressed in good and then we'll try moving on to the next one so these ones aren't copper these are more of like a uh, this is an aluminum I believe but this one is a copper a heavy very heavy copper and then these ones are more of like an alloy aluminum which is good I mean both conduct heat really well so we'll press that one in for a couple seconds we'll do vertical like this and I'll just look in the manual really quick here to see where exactly that fan goes. So it looks like the fan has two different modes. It's got a, a quiet cooling fan mode and a full speed fan mode. And really that's just the voltage that you send to the fan. And so the way this is, this is, it's already separated. And so we can just choose. We have a black wire and a red wire. So pin six is right over here. So I'm just going to plug that in here. Pin six and just press in. And now, I mean, I, if I want to do 3.3 uh, volts, I'll go on to pin 1, which is this pin. It's kind of hard to see in there, but you can see in the manual. Just that very first pin. And if I want to go on to pin 3, I would just do the next pin over to do uh, the 5 volts. So I'm going to put it on the 3.3 volts to start with. So I'll put it right uh, here. And I'll just press down. And there we go. Pin 1, pin 6. And this looks like it's red, but it's really black. It's just because it was pulled apart. So this black one is on pin six, the red one is on pin one. All right, now that everything is hooked up on there, uh, I can close this up. So to do that, uh, I'm just going to bring this over and it's got these little clips here we just push to snap down. See that, so I'll just push and snap. Now if I want to turn this into a camera, this is a spot for a camera and it'll just snap right in there. I think I have a camera module somewhere, let me see. So I do have a camera here, this is version uh, 1.3, so it's a little bit older camera. It just has this ribbon cable and I'm going to go ahead and hook this up uh, just, just for fun. It did not come with uh, this kit. I just want to make that clear. And so this is a, I, something purchased separately. But I'm going to put it in, and I guess the orientation doesn't really... Well, maybe it does matter. But I just want to show you that on, the, on this case, it has a little place here that you can clip in a camera. And, yeah, the orientation does matter. So we're going to clip this in. We'll put it in so that the lens is right there coming through. So these are where the ribbon cables can hook on to these different ports here. And so since this is going to go in uh, this orientation, I'm going to put the ribbon cable uh, just right here. And to do that, I just pull up on these these ribbon cables. You pull up, put the cable in, and then press down, and the, that just pressure 
uh, keeps that closed. So I'm going to bend this ribbon cable just a little bit. We'll straighten it out here. I'm going to try and bend this so that it goes down really low and then up and over top of the USB ports there. I'll just press and snap this. And this just snaps together. And then if we ever want to get it out, it's just like how a lot of laptops are held together. You can use like a, a coin or a, like a credit card and you can just pop that back up, pop this case back apart. But that's the whole thing. So there's no screws holding it together. And now that I'm holding it, it feels really um, decent. It feels like it's got some good weight to it. Um, it's obviously not a waterproof case, but it has good air cooling here at the bottom. Some rubber feet here so it'll sit and kind of not move too much. And then also we've got the camera that we put in and some cooling over the top. Yeah, really cool case. Let's plug it in and see how we can start using it. So to get up and going now, we need to put in our, this is kind of like our hard drive. This is where all information is stored. So it does have eight gig of RAM of memory, but this is our 128 gig chip that's going to be basically our hard drive. And it already has the Raspbian Linux operating system already installed on it. And it kind of, it doesn't have a spring where it clicks in, you just press and when it's all the way pressed in, then it's in. So you can just look and see if we have our our chip in there now, that micro SD card. And then we just need to power it up. So to do that, we'll use the provided power supply, this three amp uh, power supply, USB type C. It plugs in either way, which I like about the type C. So we'll plug that in. And then once this is plugged into the wall, we can just turn this on or off with the switch. Uh, then the only other thing we need, I mean, it'll run like this now, but if we wanna see what's happening on it, we either need to uh, plug into our network using a network cable. This also has wireless, but it's not set up yet. So what, the best thing to do is to use one of these provided HDMI cables. And then we would also need uh, a keyboard, uh, probably just a keyboard, but you could do a keyboard and a mouse so that we can interact with. So let's plug this into a monitor and try it from there.